Good morning, TK Giraffes. Happy Monday and happy spring. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Well, this week, I wanted to talk about a Jewish holiday that begins very soon, in a few weeks, and it begins in spring. It is called Passover or Pesach. It's a Jewish holiday that lasts for eight days. And on the first two days, we have something called a Seder. Now, Seder means order. And a Seder is when our family and friends get together. We have a big dinner and we read from a book called the Haggadah. The Haggadah is the story of the, when Pharaoh, the, who was not very nice, he was the king in Egypt. And he made the Jewish people work so hard for him. And they had to build pyramids. But there was one Jewish uh, baby, actually. He began as a baby. His name was Moses. And Moses' mother told Moses' sister to put him in a basket down the Nile River so that he will be safe. And as it turns out, Pharaoh's daughter, Bacha, which means daughter of the sea. She found the baby while bathing one day by the river, the Nile River in Egypt. And she took him out of the water and said, Oh, you're so cute. I'm going to take you back to the palace and see if my dad, King Pharaoh, will let us raise you there. So she went back to the palace and Sure enough, she asked King Pharaoh, Pharaoh, King, uh, Father, look at this baby. He said, who is this Jewish baby? Now, how did he know he was Jewish? He was wrapped in a blanket with a Jewish star on it. And he said, how can you, who is this Jewish baby? And how are you going to raise him in the palace? And as it turns out, Moses' mom, her name was Yochebet, she came and pretended not to be his mom, but she pretended to say to Bacha, the daughter, the princess, I can help you raise the baby in the palace. And she said, oh, that would be great. So the princess Bacha took Yochebet with her back to the palace. She said, but father, Yochebet, she could help take care of the baby and raise him in the palace. And sure enough, the king, he loved his daughter so much. He said, okay, Bacha, you may, you may raise the, the, the Jewish baby in the palace. And she told him his name. And Bacha said, his name is Moses because it means to take out of the water. And that's where she found him, in the water and the Nile River. So the story is about Moses. And when he grew up, Moses could not stand how the Jewish people were being treated because they had to make pyramids, build pyramids for mean, cruel Pharaoh. And one day, here the building, these are the pyramids they were building. And one day, Moses said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, please let my people go. I do not like it. it. You're hurting the Jewish people. And he said, no. So Moses, he took a rock, he picked up a rock, and he hurt an Egyptian soldier. He, he threw it at him because he was trying to hurt a Jewish Jewish person, just helping to build the cities. And Moses got so upset. He said, oh no, I must leave at once. I will go to the land of Midian, where I will become a shepherd. So we went to the land of Midian. There's Moses. Oh, sorry, he's upside down. <laughs> Silly teacher, Rachel. So there's Moses. And he went to become a shepherd. And one day, while he was watching the sheep <laughs> in the field, he saw what he thought was a bush that was on fire. 
But all of a sudden he heard a voice. It said, Moses, come over here, take off your sandals and kneel down before me. Moses said, what is this voice? And the, the bush spoke again. Moses, it is I, the Lord your God, the God of Israel. Kneel down before me, for this is a holy place. And Moses, he knelt down before the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord spoke, Moses, go back to the land of Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let the Jewish people go. <gasps> and Moses was shaking. And he took his staff, his long stick, and he said, okay, Lord, I will do as you say. So Moses took his family back to the land of Egypt and he took his older brother Aaron with him. They went back to the palace and said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, let, will you let the Jewish people go? My Lord spoke to me and said to let the Jewish people go. He said, who is this Lord? I don't know your Lord. He said, he's the Lord of Israel. And Pharaoh said, I don't know your Lord. I'm not going to let the Jewish people go. And then he said, fine. Then I'm going to show you what my Lord can do. So he took his staff, his big stick. And so did Aaron. They threw it down on the ground and then turned into snakes. And then Pharaoh said, ha, this is a trick. And Moses said, fine, you won't let the Jewish people go. Then I'm going to send punishments to you. And Pharaoh said, ha, fine, bring it on, Moses. So the first punishment, the, the Nile River turned to blood, but only for the Egyptians, not for the Jewish people. So they couldn't drink from the water. And then Moses went back to Pharaoh and said, now will you let the Jewish people go? And Pharaoh said, no, I will not. Moses said, fine, then my Lord will send you more punishments, you and your people. He said, fine, Moses, do as you wish. So the next was frogs. Frogs were all over, jumping everywhere, all in the palace, all over Pharaoh. And there's a song that goes, One morning when Pharaoh awoke in his bed, There were frogs on his head, and frogs on his bed, Frogs on his nose, and frogs on his toes, Frogs here, frogs there, Frogs were jumping everywhere, Even in his underwear. <laughs> How silly is that? Oh my goodness, giraffes. So then Moses went back to Pharaoh and said, Now, Pharaoh, will you let the Jewish people go? And you know what Pharaoh said? He said, No way, Jose, I will not let them go. Moses said, Fine. Then my Lord was going to send you and your people more punishments. He said, Go ahead. So the next punishment he sent was something called lice, yucky bugs that get into your hair and everyone was itchy, itchy, itchy. And then still Pharaoh said, no, I'm not going to let the Jewish people go. So then the Lord sent another punishment. Wild beasts were all over the land. Oh my gosh. But Pharaoh, that didn't scare Pharaoh. He said, I'm still not going to let the Jewish people go. So then the next one was sick cows. There were cows all over, all over the land of Egypt. And they were sick. And then Pharaoh said, still, I'm not going to let the Jewish people go. So the next one was something called boils. And boils are big, big red bumps all over the, the, the skin of the Egyptians. They were hurting and itching. But still, Pharaoh said, no way. I'm not going to let the Jewish people go. So the next plague was hail. Hail is hard rain. 
and it was falling all over the Egyptians and hurting them so much. But still, Pharaoh said, now I'm still not going to let the Jewish people go. So then there was something called locusts, and locusts have these big bugs. They kind of look like, maybe kind of like grasshoppers, but they're big, and and they eat up all the crops in the field. So there was no food for the Egyptians. Still, Pharaoh said, no, I will not let the Jewish people go. And then Moses said, fine, if you insist, then I'm going to send another plague. So this plague was called darkness. And it was dark in the land of Egypt for three whole days and three whole nights. And the Egyptians couldn't see anything. But not for the Jewish people. For the Jewish people, they had light and they could see when it was daytime. Just not for the Egyptians. Finally, Pharaoh said to Moses, Moses, I've had enough. Take your people at once before I change my mind. Moses said, oh, thank you, Pharaoh. So Moses went back to his people and said, Jewish people, you must leave Egypt at once before Pharaoh changes his mind. Gather all your belongings and let's go. So they said, okay. But while they were gathering their belongings, they wanted to bake some bread so they would have it with them on their journey out of Egypt. So what did they do? They took some flour and some water, but they didn't have time to put it in their ovens. So they put it on their backs and it became flat like a cracker. It was matzah. I'm a little matzah flat and thin. Open your mouth and put me in. Baked in the desert, in the sun. Pesach is coming, oh what fun. So finally they got down to the river there. And Moses was leading with his staff. And they started walking, walking across the river. And as they were walking, all of a sudden, Pharaoh realized, oh no, I let the Jewish people go. I have no one to build my cities for me. So he said to his soldiers, soldiers, go after the Jewish people at once and bring them back to me so that they can build my cities. And they said, okay. So they started going in with their horses and their chariots and they were running after the Jewish people. Moses took his staff. And he hit it on a rock and said, Lord, please part the waters. And guess what? All of a sudden, the water started to part. It was a miracle. And the Jewish people were going through, walking and walking, but kind of going fast because all of a sudden they saw the Egyptian soldiers coming behind them close by. So finally they got to the other side and then after they got there, Moses took his staff once again and hit it on a rock and said, Lord, please close the waters. And all of a sudden the waters closed and the Egyptian soldiers could not get to the Jewish people. And the Jewish, Jewish people, people go, then I'm going to send punishments to you. And Pharaoh said, ha, fine, bring it on, Moses. So the first punishment, the water the, and the Nile River turned to blood, but only for the Egyptians, not for the Jewish people. So they couldn't drink from the water. And then Moses went back to Pharaoh and said, now will you let the Jewish people go? And Pharaoh said, no, I will not. Moses said, fine, then my Lord will send you more punishments, you and your people. He said, fine, Moses, do as you wish. So the next was frogs. Frogs were all over, jumping everywhere, all in the palace, all over Pharaoh. And there's a song that goes, 
One morning when Pharaoh awoke in his bed, there were frogs on his head and frogs on his bed. Frogs on his nose and frogs on his toes. Frogs here, frogs there. Frogs were jumping everywhere, even in his underwear. <laughs> How silly is that? Oh my goodness, giraffes. So then Moses went back to Pharaoh and said, Now, Pharaoh, will you let the Jewish people go? And you know what Pharaoh said? He said, no way, Jose, I will not let them go. Moses said, fine. Then my Lord was going to send you and your people more punishments. He said, go ahead. So the next punishment he sent was something called lice, yucky bugs that get into your hair. And everyone was itchy, itchy, itchy. And then still, Pharaoh said, no, I'm not going to let the Jewish people go. So then the Lord sent another punishment. Wild beasts were all over the land. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But Pharaoh, that didn't scare Pharaoh. He said, I'm still not going to let the Jewish people go. So then the next one was sick cows. There were cows all over all over the land of Egypt, and they were sick. And then Pharaoh said, still, I'm not going to let the Jewish people go. So the next one was something called boils, and boils are big, big red bumps all over the, the, the skin of the Egyptians. They were hurting and itching. But still, Pharaoh said, no way, I'm not going to let the Jewish people go. So the next plague was hail. Hail is hard rain. And it was falling all over the Egyptians and hurting them so much. But still, Pharaoh said, no, I'm still not going to let the Jewish people go. So then there was something called locusts. And locusts had these big bugs. They kind of look like, maybe kind of like grasshoppers, but they're big and and they eat up all the crops in the field. So there was no food for the Egyptians. Still, Pharaoh said, no, I will not let the Jewish people go. And then Moses said, fine, if you insist, then I'm going to send another plague. So this plague was called darkness. And it was dark in the land of Egypt for three whole days and three whole nights. And the Egyptians couldn't see anything, but not for the Jewish people. For the Jewish people, they had light and they could see when it was daytime, just not for the Egyptians. Finally, Pharaoh said to Moses, Moses, I've had enough. Take your people at once before I change my mind. Moses said, oh, thank you, Pharaoh. So Moses went back to his people and said, Jewish people, we must leave Egypt at once before Pharaoh changes his mind. Gather all your belongings and let's go. So they said, okay. But while they were gathering their belongings, they wanted to bake some bread so they would have it with them on their journey out of Egypt. So what did they do? They took some flour and some water. But they didn't have time to put it in their ovens. So they put it on their backs and it became flat like a cracker. It was matzah. I'm a little matzah flat and thin. Open your mouth and put me in. Baked in the desert in the sun. Pesach is coming. Oh, what fun. So finally, they got down to the river there, and Moses was leading with his staff. And they started walking, walking across the river. And as they were walking, all of a sudden, Pharaoh realized, oh no, 
I let the Jewish people go. I have no one to build my cities for me. So he said to his soldiers, soldiers, go after the Jewish people at once and bring them back to me so that they can build my cities. And they said, okay. So they started going in with their horses and their chariots and they were running after the Jewish people. Moses took his staff and he hit it on a rock and said, Lord, please part the waters. And guess what? All of a sudden, the water started to part. It was a miracle. And the Jewish people were going through, walking and walking, but kind of going fast because all of a sudden they saw the Egyptian soldiers coming behind them close by. So finally they got to the other side. And then after they got there, Moses took his staff once again and hit it on a rock and said, Lord, please close the waters. And all of a sudden the waters closed and the Egyptian soldiers could not get to the Jewish people. It was closed. And the Egyptian soldiers could not get to the Jewish people. And the Jewish people were so happy. They said, yay, we're free, we're free. And that is how Moses led the Jewish people out of Egypt. And then we celebrate that every year at Pesach, at Passover. So I wanted to read to you a little book that I found called Hooray. It's Passover. <laughs> And the author's name, the person who wrote the book, is Leslie Kimmelman. The illustrator, the person who drew the pictures, is John Himmelman. Now that's interesting. Kimmelman and Himmelman rhyme. Rhyming names. Cool. It's Passover. My relatives come from far and near to share our Seder dinner. First, we will hear of the days when the Jews were working for Pharaoh in the land of Egypt. We will taste the special Passover foods. Crunchy matzah is my favorite. I pass out the Haggadah. Remember now, the Haggadah is the book for Passover that tells the story. My mother lights the holiday candles. My father blesses the wine. We leave a glass of wine and an empty chair for Elijah. Elijah was a special man. He was a rabbi and he was a teacher. And when any of the Jewish people had a problem or they needed some advice, they would go to Elijah. And Elijah always helped helped to help them with their problems. And he promised Elijah before he died, he said, I'm going to visit all the Jewish people's homes every year, all the Jewish people's homes in the whole world every year on Passover. So we leave an empty glass for him and we leave a, a chair and we welcome Elijah to our city. We all dip parsley in salt water. So for my next lesson, I'm going to talk about the Seder plate and why we dip parsley and what the other things are on the Seder plate for the next lesson. My little brother asked the special Passover questions. They're called the four questions, which we're also, I'm going to teach you for. We're going to learn. I'm going to teach you for Passover. Why is this night different from all other nights, he begins. My grandpa tells the story of the mean Pharaoh and of brave Moses who led the Jewish people to freedom. And there's Pharaoh, me, me, Pharaoh. 
and the Jewish people working hard to build his pyramid. My cousins sing Dayenu, a happy Passover song, which I'm going to teach you later about Dayenu. It means it would have been enough. And there is the Seder plate, which I'm going to teach you about another day. We wash our hands right at the table. Then my father says the prayer over the matzah, the flat bread that we eat on Passover. So instead of regular bread, we eat flat bread. And we're going to talk more about that another day as well. My uncles eat bitter herbs on their matzah. My aunts like sweet haroset better. It's time for dinner. My grandmothers serve children chicken soup and matzah balls. Mmm, one of my favorites. Our cats sniff the gefilte fish. They love fish. After dinner, the children hunt for the afikomen. That's the dessert matzah. A piece of matzah that has been wrapped in a napkin and hidden. I wonder where it will be. Could it be under the sofa, on top of the piano? Whoever finds it will get a special treat. So it depends. In some people's homes, you get a prize, maybe a game or something like that or something else. Or some people give money. It depends. But you do get a special treat. It could be chocolate, chocolate matzah. It could be anything. A nice treat for Passover. I found it. Hooray. Happy, happy Passover. Yay! So my friends, I hope you enjoyed I hope you enjoyed this story that I I told about Passover and the story that I just read. I'm going to be talking a lot about Passover and we're going to sing songs and you're going to do projects with me. I'm going to give you homework. But right now I want to say it's so good to talk to you again and hope to see you soon. We're going to, I actually hope that we're going to see you. Teacher Paulina and I will see you soon. Um, not also in person, but before that, we're going to see each other like this over the online, over the phone. And we'll be able to talk to each other and see each other and have circle times and have fun together. So for now, have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.